years, for 29 years on radio, and he hosts LSU coaches shows as well. He's one of the most recognizable voices in the Deep South and respected by all, and we're just happy that he takes the time out of his schedule to come visit with us every year. It's a distinct pleasure. Number one, LSU travels to number two, Alabama, a week from Saturday. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to the voice of the LSU Tigers, Jim Hoffman. Jim? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, as an addendum to what uh, Roger was saying, the SEC men's basketball tournament is here also this year. So congratulations to New Orleans for the uh, basketball and the football national championship in the SEC basketball uh, uh, tournament. And uh, this is a great sports city. It, it, it truly is. And congratulations to what the Saints did last night also. Um, this has been a, uh, a terrific year. Uh, there's no question about that. And those of us that had the opportunity to see this team uh, in the preseason uh, and to realize what was returning from last year and how strong the recruiting class was coming in had a sneaking suspicion that this could be something special. Uh, and as it has turned out, it certainly has. LSU 8-0 and five of the eight wins were against teams ranked in the top 25. Uh, which nobody else in the country has, has done that. And so um, now here we are uh, in a two-week period that is going to be <laughs> something uh, because this game coming up next with Alabama is going to be uh, turned inside out, upside down, analyzed, picked apart, anticipated, and they'll finally get around to play it. And uh, I, I certainly do uh, look very much forward to that because uh, it's two teams that are very, very similar, two teams from the Southeastern Conference, which is the best football conference in America, uh, and it's, it's the first time ever in the history of that conference that number one and number two have played each other during the regular season. So um, it, it really should be something special. Uh, LSU this, year, this week, two more players. Uh, with special recognition, um, the uh, special teams player of the week uh, for LSU freshman Brad Wing, uh, the LSU punter, who uh, punted four times last week and averaged 51 yards, and three of those were down inside the 10 yard line. Uh, he is <coughs> terrific at doing that and um, is honored for it this week. And the, the SEC defensive lineman of the week, and Wing is a freshman. The SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week is Barkevius Mingo, and he's a sophomore. And so that, uh, I think that just points out what we all saw, is that not only does LSU have a very good starting 11 on both sides of the ball, but they have great depth, and the depth is not just bodies. It is very talented people that can step up and can play and I don't think it could be illustrated any better than what happened last week. And the Tigers had uh, three young men who were prominent uh, figures in LSU's uh, success so far this year, not in the stadium. And the other guy stepped up and LSU beat Auburn 45 to 10. It's the most points LSU's ever scored against Auburn. It's the biggest margin of victory that LSU has ever beaten Auburn by. Uh, and so the team just didn't miss a beat. And, uh, so, uh, here we go, eight and zero, number one team in the country in all the polls. Uh, things are good uh, in Tiger Town right now. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. Just raise your hand, Jim. Yes, sir. The loser of the LSU. Well, LSU won a national championship with two losses and with one loss, so. Uh, I would think so, although uh, I would also think that the winner of that game has uh, a leg up. Uh, but a lot of people have talked to me about that and said, okay, you guys go up there and beat Alabama, you're, gonna, you're, you're locked into the championship game. Not so fast. LSU still got to play Arkansas. And Arkansas and LSU, Tigers have a problem with Arkansas. They just always do. And Arkansas is a very good team. And if you happen to get by that, then all you have to do is just go beat the guys that won the East, you know, in, in, in the SEC championship game. So it is nothing is a given 
Uh, but it would be a lot easier to get there if you win the Alabama game. I don't, I don't think there's any question that, that they're aware of it. If, if, you, if you listen to uh, some of the, the interviews that they do and, and, and the things that they are quoted in the paper and say, I think, I think they're very aware of the fact that, uh, that they have a very good team. And they're proud of it, they work hard, uh, but they know there's an awful lot of work left to be done. And yes, there has been some distractions uh, this year, but this is a team who has the ability to shut that out and, and to go on and play. They, they go to the field and work hard every day. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they were missing Russell Shepard for a period of time. They were missing those three guys last week. Uh, they were missing, they, they're going to miss Dworsic all season long. Uh, Lonergren's just going to come back. He's missed a couple of games. Uh, Jefferson just came back, and they're 8-0. And an average, uh, an average <laughs> final score this year is 39 to 10 for LSU. Everybody they've played, they've beaten everybody by double digits. Um, it's pretty special, and I certainly do hope it continues and expect it to. Yes, sir. Is there a special one? Oh, I, I'm sure that there is. I, I, I doubt very seriously if they're practicing today. I, I would, or probably yesterday. Uh, you know, uh, but exactly what Coach Miles has in, in store for them, I'm not sure. It, it certainly does come. Well, <clears throat> there's two ways of, of looking at it. I was going to say it comes at a really good time. After you've played eight straight games, you know, against top, five of them against top 25 opponents, uh, after eight games, it's time to take a little break. But with the tremendous momentum that LSU has, and the fact that they've won eight in a row, uh, <clears throat> almost, <clears throat> and knowing what's coming up with all the hype in the next two weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, I almost wish we were playing this Saturday, but we'll see. <coughs> yes, sir. Well, I think that uh, he is uh, happy. <laughs> I know I was happy uh, after the game, and I think he's very pleased uh, with his football team. And, and I, you know, he, he's made statements down through the years in the last, his national championship year, you know, he had a damn fine football team. And, and I think he would tell you that same thing this year. Uh, I think he's pleased with his team. Uh, they have overcome these adversities that we've talked about. And, uh, you know, I think he's confident if they continue to play at their best, that this can be the season that we've been talking about. And, and he is the type of coach, unlike some others, that will take the time to enjoy it and, and will take the time to uh, enjoy it with his family and with his players. And, and he's, not, he, he's not ashamed to let you know that he appreciates things and that he enjoys things. And, so, uh, and, and on the recruiting part of it, that's, that's why LSU's program is at the level that it is now and, and the reason that I think it will always be there because of the recruiting. Uh, and in the last 
since Nick got there in 2000 and started rebuilding the program, LSU has done a terrific job at recruiting and getting really good football players, whether they got three or four or five stars, they, they have a way of analyzing players very well. And they've got to thank this gentleman for, for sending us uh, you know, some people and, and the big guy's gonna send us next year. So uh, I think that's a big part of it. Yes, sir. Uh, not that we've been told. Uh, he's, he's a very good player, there's no question about that. But, but then LSU has just got such great depth. That, that, and and that, that's the reason, if you look back at, at the games this year, LSU has been able to, in almost every game, take the game over in the third quarter because they can keep sending fresh guys out there. And, and the talent level doesn't really diminish when they send them out there. Case in point, Mingo being a defensive uh, lineman of the week as a sophomore, you know. So, uh, no, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I asked Michael Bonnet uh, before I came down here, are we healthy? He said, we didn't get anybody hurt in that game. So, you know, with, with two weeks off, uh, we should go up there as healthy as we've been all year long. Anybody? Well, he's a handful. Uh, he's really good, and he's got a very good offensive line that's uh, that's blocking for him. Uh, I mean, th this this game really could be one of the uh, premier regular season games in a very long time. It's for, in all of college football because you got one and two and the both teams are so very similar. Uh, I mean, Richardson, without question, is, is one of the great running backs in the country right now. And LSU doesn't have one that stands out there like that. But I mean, you just you just took our, our leading rusher out of the mix. He, didn't, he wasn't even at the stadium in, at all, physically, on Saturday night. And Kenny Hilliard comes in there and runs over everybody. And then you got Michael Ford, who was the leading rusher, and Alfred Blue pitched in, and Terrence McGee pitched in. So LSU will do it by committee, and they can keep sending fresh people in there. So what's going to happen with Richardson is LSU is going to keep hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and hitting me, and they can hit you pretty hard. So we'll have to wait and see. Yes, sir. Uh, one question. Well, coach, it, well, the coaching staff uh, does, I think, an excellent job of that, and the players try to guide their teammates and try to help their own teammates. And it's not a problem that it, it's happened here, and that makes it more real to us. But if you read in the paper almost every day, at every college somewhere in the country, there's some young man that did something he shouldn't have done, regrets that he did it, he's been suspended or, or, or punished or whatever. Uh, so uh, it, it's, I wish there was a, a, a perfect way to do that. I wish you could get all of these uh, basically teenage young men and get them in a room and say, now don't do this, and they would just not do it. But it, it's almost impossible to do that. I can promise you these three guys, when they play again, uh, whatever that is, uh, they're going to remember what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Well, I, I think that it has tarnished him at this point, and uh, now if he, and I think he understands that. He didn't understand it, but he does now. Um, and so when he gets back on the field, if he continues to, if he gets his play back up to the level, uh, to where it was, uh, you know, that I think he can put it behind him, and I hope everybody else will too. Uh, that remains to be seen. But again, getting back to the LSU depth, I think personally, I believe that these guys are going to be eligible to play in the Alabama game. I don't know how much they'll play, though. You know, I don't know how. I don't know if any of them will start or how much they'll play because we just beat a team 45 to 10 with them not in the stadium. So that teaches them, I think, the greatest lesson of all. I hope. Anybody else? All right. Well, again, thank you very much for allowing me to come down and speak to you. And I hope you have a great week.